Week nine NFL picks and predictions. We're back with our two of our favorite cappers, LB and the Spin Doc. If you're new here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you our top plays, our top predictions, along with the opportunity to win some money. If you'd like to qualify for today's giveaway, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel, hit it right now. Number two, comment below, three and do, oh, give us the good vibes, and then number three, like the video. You do all that, and either of our guys sweep, I'll do a $20 giveaway per sweep. And I'm going to take that back. Actually, our first guy, LB, has four plays. So if he goes 4-0, I'll do a $40 giveaway. If Spindock goes 3-0, I'll do a $20 giveaway, all the way up to potentially $60 on the show. All right, we're going to jump right into it. LB's got four plays. Catch LB on Twitter at LB underscore PRA underscore locks. And you can get all of his best plays for only $5 a month by using code BYB. He's a regular on all of our shows at this point, and now we will dive into his top NFL plays. The first one we're going to talk about is going to be Tyrone Tracy. On the year, Tracy, he's got 73 carries, 376 yards, two touchdowns, a 5.2 average. Break it down for us, LB, what we're doing with this one. All right, so this is uh, kind of playing into uh, the defensive matchup. There's going to be an opportunity for uh, some uh, passes out of the backfield. Uh, Tyrone Tracy was brought in to, to be that uh, that secondary running back as the Giants have been uh, trying to replace the void that Saquon left. But uh, he's had a couple great games here to get started uh, in his uh, extended time uh, as a feature back. So I see this opportunity for him to get a couple good a couple quick uh, receptions here uh, to ease some of the pressure off of Jones. Uh, he's going to have a, a pretty loaded uh, Washington Commanders front coming after him. And so this dumb down spot is going to be uh, a place where he can uh, get some yardage here. Uh, the team has uh, done a good job of uh, limiting uh, some receptions to running backs in their past, but uh, I think this is just a spot where the Giants kind of excel. They have an edge here with the uh, commanders and Tracy. Uh, he cleared uh, concussion protocols yesterday and all, so he's 100% uh, from his last game. Really had a big breakout game in, uh, uh, in the game this past week. So looking for him to add on to that in a short week, turning around from a Monday night game. Uh, rooting for him as a hometown kid, I, I've uh, watched come up. Uh, so I'm a little bit uh, biased on this pick, but – uh, the, the numbers do line up for the opportunities and snap count that he's going to see as long as he's 100%. So uh, going with Tracy for his receiving yards in this one. Lock it in. Tracy over 16 and a half receiving yards as LB's first play. All right, play number two. We're looking at the New England Patriots, two and six on the year, taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are one and six. This is a game of two pretty bad teams this year. This game is 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox. And I believe we are looking at a uh, alternate total points here. I'll let you break it down here, LB. Yep. When it's they say when it's low, it's it's probably low for a reason. And uh, you called it out. These are two of the uh, uh, anemic offensive teams. Uh, the Titans actually actually just got plummeted last week, and uh, not sure that they'll be able to get much going against New England. And New England does have a good defense. We've seen that. We've seen them make stops, but. They can't always answer with the points. So I do agree with the uh, original line, but I'm always weary of uh, what the hook may be. So it went up a few points to still get us at minus 138, which is a solid single bet here. So just going for some trends on what we've seen offensively from both teams struggling to score and uh, uh, what kind of ugly matchups they've seen throughout the course of this season. So looking for the under in this one uh, between the two ugly teams. <laughs> Lock it in. We're taking under 39 and a half between the Patriots Titans as LB's second play. All right, play number three. We're looking at A.J. Brown, the wide receiver for the Eagles. On the year, he's got 21 receptions, 408 yards, three touchdowns, a 19.4 average. And we are looking at his receiving yards as well. Another alternate line. Break it down for us, LB. Like I said, I'm always weary of the hook. Uh, the lines are sharpening here as we get through the season. Uh, different plays, different situations are, you know, you, you'd be surprised at some of the yardage. You was like, well, it looks like 10 yards to me, and then they mark it at nine. So uh, they have him at 80 and a half uh, for regular, uh, the regular line. It could possibly shift around. Uh, 
but it's been pretty solid at this number uh, through the week, so I've been tracking it. But 80 is still good for the uh, type of juice we like to pay. I just think uh, that Hurts has made a committed effort to get A.J. the ball. Uh, The books haven't really respected this line to raise it up past this, and so we're just kind of staying in this this zone. He really showed out last week. As, like you said, the uh, the Eagles really tore into the uh, Titans. So uh, I really see them uh, continue to feature him. Uh, continue to look, make plays down the field, and uh, he's Hurts' number one target. Uh, he's healthy, and they're going to keep going into him. So the volume should be there for pass, uh, pass targets, and so we should see the yards to match that in the 80 mark. So 80 was a good mark. Lock it in. 80-plus receiving yards for A.J. Brown is LB's third play, and now his fourth and final play now. We're looking at Geno Smith, the quarterback for the Seahawks. On the year, number one in yards at 2,197 yards, eight touchdowns, seven picks, a 57.3 quarterback rating. Break it down. We're looking at his pass completions here. Yeah, Gino is a volume passer. Uh, short passes throughout through his, you know, three tight ends he has. Obviously, DK Metcalf, uh, Jackson Smith, uh, Nagata, and also uh, Lock, uh, Lockwood as well. Those are guys that uh, are always in the slots uh, looking for him. But against this Rams team, he's just they just have not allowed uh, – they've only allowed one uh, passer to complete uh, past 22 passes. So when this number came out, it was kind of odd. Yes, we know Geno gets a high completion rate uh, with this volume that he does. Um, but it seems like something's uh, a miss here because something in the Rams' uh, defensive schemes have uh, – allow teams to stay under this mark in every single game. Brock Purdy was the only one who uh, got at 22 completions exactly. And, I, you know, this is not that type of same matchup. So I'm looking for uh, Geno to slide just underneath this number with the game script that will probably have them running the ball as much as they can. And so that kind of helps even things out with uh, him staying under, under 22 and a half on this one. Lock it in. Smith under 22 and a half. Total pass completions as LB's four plays and his fourth and final one there. And again, if he goes 4-0, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. All right, we are going to transition now to our guy, Spindoc. Catch Spindoc on Twitter at Spindoc Sports. And he was a regular with us in uh, baseball on a regular basis, covering strikeout props. And I know he will be covering a lot of college basketball as well. We are right around the corner from college basketball. Make sure you guys... Do set your notifications, subscribe, so you can check out our college basketball shows. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into Spin Dogs. Three plays. The first one we're talking about, Cole Kemet. 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 Yep. Kemet. Okay, I'm glad you corrected me on that one. The tight end for the Bears. On the year, he's got 27 receptions, 303 yards, three touchdowns, an 11.2 average. And what we are looking at here is going to be his receiving yards. Break it down for us, Ben. Well, there was a period of time earlier in the season uh, before Caleb Williams started becoming a little more patient with the ball uh, back when Keenan Allen wasn't in, when Roma Dunzier was kind of nicked up and, and and they didn't have as many receiving weapons on the outside where Komet took advantage uh, in a three week stretch from week uh, three through five. He had a, a, a total of 18 total targets and actually had 23 targets if you count the next week, week six. But since those guys have come back and since Williams has built more rapport and really the Bears have modified their offense to be able to throw to the outside more, commit just one target last week. And uh, his snap rate, which was hovering in the low 90, high 80s to low 90s, went all the way down under 80% for the first time all, this, all the way back since week one. And so that that that's the first part on the bear side. Now, on the cardinal side, for a lot of the issues and uh, limitations that the Cardinals' defense has had this year, they do rank sixth in past DVOA two tight ends. They have actually only allowed one tight end to score this year <clears throat> and have allowed very, very few long tight end catches. So you factor those two things in um, and you factor in that that the Bears offense, which was the design when they signed all these guys on the outside, was that they would take advantage of Williams's big arm, his ability to run and throw downfield along the sidelines in space. 
And really, uh, I, I, I talked about the Cardinals DVOA against tight ends. They are in the bottom third of the league against really anybody on the outside. So there's just not uh, he commence served his purpose earlier in the year. Uh, but now the Bears are relying a whole lot more on their outside receivers. They're also relying a whole lot more on DeAndre Swift. Uh, he's been on an absolute roll so far, getting at least, uh, I think, over the last four weeks, getting 18 touches, uh, 18 carries, probably 20 total touches a game. So it just doesn't leave a whole lot of work for Komet here. So uh, the under is where I'm going with this one. So we will go Cole Komet under receiving yards lock it in taking Cole commit under 29 and a half receiving yards mm -hmm. as spin dogs first play all right play number two now we're looking at lad mcconkney sweet name he's the wide receiver for the chargers on the year he's got 30 receptions 376 yards four touchdowns a 12.5 average and what we're doing here is looking at his receiving yards as well of 55.5 over or under break it down for a spin uh, so McConkey has actually established himself as the number one receiver in this offense. And one of the reasons why he has a, a matchup advantage this week is he averages 4.18 yards per route against man coverage this season. The only receiver in the entire NFL that averages more yards per route run against man coverage is this guy named Justin Jefferson, who you might have heard of. Uh, so, But how this helps him this week is McConkey gets a Browns defense that plays man coverage at the third highest rate in the league. His target share over the last few weeks and his snap count have gone or have have been very, very consistent. Uh, he's, aver he's, he's averaging seven targets a game over the last three weeks and really building a rapport with uh, Justin Herbert. So the other thing that's factoring in here is actually on the running game because the uh, Chargers are one of the most run heavy teams in the league. That makes a whole lot of sense because Harbaugh's their coach and Greg Roman's their offensive coordinator. They've always been run heavy under those guys. Uh, teams that those guys have coached have always been run heavy. But the uh, Browns do have a top 10 defense against running backs. And they also are third best in adjusted line yards allowed to running backs. So <clears throat> not letting running backs get into the second level, not letting running backs run with a lot of power success, not and, and in the exact areas that the Chargers like to run J.K. Dobbins. So um, I'm not quite ready to do kind of like a double dip and take Dobbins yards under. I think he might just get enough volume alone just to, j just to uh, eclipse it. But when you play man coverage at this high of rate and you give me a guy at this low of a number, because his number is certainly lower than Justin Jefferson, um, and 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 these stats against man coverage, I will take it. So Lad McConkey over uh, I believe it's 55 and a half receiving yards. Lock it in. We're taking Lad McConkney over 55 and a half receiving yards as Spins second play. Moving on to his third and final play now, Saquon Barkley, the running back for the Eagles. On the year, 130 carries, 766 yards, which is second. Five touchdowns, a 5.9 average. And we're looking at here is going to be his rushing yards of 89.5. Take it from here, Spin. So if I thought that this game was going to be close and I thought that this would be a dogfight back and forth, and I also thought that the Jags' pass defense could do anything even remotely close uh, uh, of shutting down or even limiting guys in the pass game. Uh, this honestly, to me, this actually kind of correlates with with the uh, AJ with the AJ Brown prop that that was just talked about. Uh, so. To me, Saquon might fall short of this number. Or actually, I do think he'll fall short of this number simply due to lack of opportunity. And it pains me to say it because in one of my dynasty leagues, I really, really need him to have a good game. But game script might throw a wrench in that. Uh, for all for how bad they are at pass defense, the Jags 11th in rushing DVOA uh, on defense. And they're also 10th in line yards allowed to running backs. So their overall front, front four and their run stuffing has actually been pretty good. So you go back and look and, and, and in games 
where the Eagles have, well, they're favored by seven and a half, but I'm actually projecting almost a, probably a, probably a 10 to 14 point win in games like that. You do see some, uh, a little bit of a pulling back in, uh, Barkley's carries. So I'm going under here under 89 and a half. And it's not due to the fact that I think that Jacksonville's defense is so stellar or that Jacksonville would win the game. It's actually the opposite. I think that I think that they're just going to get blown out. And I think that Philly can easily win this game by two, maybe even three possessions. And when that happens, um, uh, and and the rushing defense is actually a lot better than the passing defense, that's where props like this can go to die. So I will take under 89 and a half yards for Saquon Barkley simply due to the fact that I don't think it's going to be necessary for him to rush enough to get that. And the Jags have been limiting big rushes of uh, 15, 20 yards or more. Lock it in. We're taking Barkley under 89 and a half rushing yards as Spins third and final play. And again, if he goes 3-0, I'll cash up somebody 20 bucks. That is going to do it. Don't forget, though, if you'd like to qualify for any of the giveaway, number one, subscribe. Number two, comment below, either 4-0 or 3-0. And then number three, like the video. You do that, and either of our guys sweep. I'll be doing either a 40 or 20, all the way up to a $60 giveaway on the Bust Your Bookie show. Our motto on the show is to bust your bookie. Let's go for the 7-0 sweep in week nine in the NFL.